My name is Chris Fields. I own a training company here in the state in Southington called King 33 Training. It opened in September this year. We train people in personal protection, home defense, anti carjack. We train people who own firearms and who do not. The people who own firearms, we, own, we train people with rifle, pistol, and shotgun. Those are the three most common types of firearms that people own that use for either sporting, home defense, or recreation, or any combination of those. The industry that I'm in is self-defense, self personal protection. We're going to use the M4 as, my, as I know it from my background being military special forces or the AR-15 as everybody else knows it out here. Today we're going to shoot that M4 and we're going to show you why it is the most likely weapon to be used by people and women and mothers as a home defense rifle. The reason for that is because it is a lightweight weapon. It has four points of contact versus two with a pistol. Those four points of contact I'll demonstrate here in a minute, but those help you shoulder this weapon a little easier and more accurately than a pistol. Those four points of contact and the way that the weapon is designed with being lightweight and usually a collapsible buttstock, but in this state you have to have it restricted, makes this weapon more versatile for a one-size-fits-all type of home defense weapon, meaning I can use it, my wife can use it, my kids can use it, my grandmother can use it, my sister can use it, and my brother who's bigger than me can use it. If this buttstock was able to collapse, we could actually all use this same weapon in home defense if we all lived together or, or were in the same location. The four points of contact that I was talking to you about earlier are the buttstock in your shoulder, the pistol grip for your firing hand, the support hand going on the stock, the foregrip, and your cheeked stock well. Your face is actually going to lay behind the sights. So these four points of contact help you aim the weapon and they help you fire the weapon with extreme accuracy. This weapon is a lot easier to fire than a pistol or even a shotgun in, in matter of personal protection or home defense. Because you don't have to work so hard on the fundamentals or principles in an extreme situation, you don't have to remember all those fine, minute techniques. You just have to pick it up, point, fire in the direction of your assailant, and they're going to get the message that they don't want to come after you anymore. If you take this away, you're taking away a piece of our security, a piece of our Second Amendment. You can't take this away from me. You're not going to get that far. This 30-round magazine is not enough. I recommend everybody carry at least three of these. Now you're talking about 90 rounds of ammunition. We go by the principle of two is one, one is none. You have at least two magazines in case one magazine fails. You have another magazine in case that you run out of ammunition. I told you before when I testified that there's no difference between the battleground in Iraq and Afghanistan and the battleground in your bedroom. If you have to change magazines, you have to be able to do that, whether it's 10 rounds or 30 rounds. But if I have my family in my hands and I only have one magazine and I didn't bring another one with me because I didn't have time, I've got 30 rounds. That means I have 30 chances to save myself and my family versus the 10 that you think is enough. But again, I told you before, you're not the subject matter expert. I consider myself and people like me the subject matter expert in personal, personal protection and home defense. This one magazine may be all I need. If I have a 10 round magazine, I have to grab three of them. And then it's a low light situation, which means I now have one hand on my weapon system, whether it's a pistol or a rifle. I have three magazines in my other hand and potentially a flashlight and the rest of my family. You can't manage all of that in one swing around the corner. You only need to be worried about one thing, taking out the assailant with equal or greater force. If you take these away, these are going to start showing up on our streets. If you take these away, I can't defend my family against them. These weapon systems come with different types of optics. You have what was called iron sights, which aren't most weapons have come with a set of iron sights, so that way you don't have to have an optic. This is a holographic sight. This is a lot easier to aim and point at your assailant than iron sights on a pistol in the middle of the night. This weapon is going to allow me, under a high level of stress, in an austere environment that would normally have been my bedroom, a greater chance of success in fighting off an assailant. It's easy to load. It's about seven pounds dry without a magazine. You insert the magazine with one hand. You let the bolt go with the other. 
you point and you shoot. For me, that's good enough. For my kid, that's good enough. For my wife, that's good enough. We're going to be able to defend ourselves now. We're going to be able to use this weapon system, which is the primary weapon system for personal protection and home defense, which is the weapon that SWAT teams and federal agencies use when they come to your house for home uh, assaults that they do on residences for, the, for very good reason. This weapon system is very accurate. This weapon system is very efficient. The rounds that come out of this rep weapon, the 223 or 556 five, NATO round, are designed to disintegrate on impact with whatever material they come in contact with, preventing a, a lesser ability of overpenetration and lethality with that overpenetration with the fragments that'll come out on the other side of the wall. So if I get into a shootout in my house, I'm gonna get this from out under my bed, unlock it, put a magazine in, and I'm gonna go clear my house and make sure my family is safe with this weapon. This is about as long as my arm. It's pretty easy to manipulate around my house. My family can do the same thing and so can yours. And across the country, there's over three million people that do on a regular basis. My name is Lori Shortino and I live in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. And I am here to demonstrate with my weapon, my AR-15, um, the, the ease of use of uh, being a woman, um, and I, um, I'm not sure what else to uh, say other than I'm a mom, I am a sister, I am a uh, grandmother, and, and um, I am an avid shooter. Um, I believe in the Second Amendment right to uh, bear arms. And I uh, believe very strongly in protecting my family, my property, and those around me, wherever I may be, um, out and about. And um, I'm about to show you how I, how I handle my weapon um, and my 30-round magazines and how comfortable it is for as a woman, um, it's it's. There's nothing scary about about it. Um, yeah. 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 And, okay. We're ready to. You can see when she's shooting, there's very little recoil. I'm not going to comment on your weight, but she's she's not a she's she's not 210 pounds like I am. She's managing the recoil. She's managing one, <laughs> 130. She's managing the sights correctly. She's managing trigger recoil or trigger management. She's ran, managing all the principles and fundamentals of marksmanship that are required to fire the rifle, that also go into the pistol. The thing about the pistol is it's a lot easier to screw up the process in which you need to apply the principles and fundamentals to have an accurate shot on your target. This weapon system makes it a little easier to do that. So at that heightened point of stress, you don't have to pay attention to those fundamentals and principles as intently as you do with a pistol. You can miss your shot with the pistol a lot easier than you can with the rifle. When you're talking about home defense, this round going through your walls is going to disintegrate into small pieces and fragment upon impact with drywall or plywood or two by fours or anything like that. So that way on, when it penetrates through the wall, it's a lot smaller than a nine mil pistol round or a slug from a shotgun, 12 gauge or 20 gauge or even buckshot, those little BBs that come out of a shotgun. This is the ideal round. This is the round that all for law enforcement, federal, municipal, state, 
use when they come into people's houses, when they go into buildings. When they went into Sandy Hook, they took this rifle with them. Now, is that, uh, is that a less lethal round than a larger caliber? No. This is still a lethal round. A larger caliber is actually going to cause over-penetration and masked with the actual projectile, which is this little piece here on a larger round. It's going to be, it's going to maintain mass and it's going to maintain some velocity greater than this particular round will while firing inside of a residence or a building. Last question. What would you say to Connecticut's 187 state legislators who are going to have to make a decision in the near future on whether this weapon will be banned and the uh, higher capacity uh, magazines will also be uh, banned? I say you need to educate yourself. You need to understand what it is that you're actually talking about. You need to understand what it is that you're actually going to affect, who you're going to affect, I think you need to come out here and get a gun in your hands or at least come see them. Some of you have already done that. The rest of you need to do that. You need to do that together so you can make educated decisions. You need to talk with manufacturers. You need to talk with private companies. You need to talk with citizens who've been victims before. You need to talk with police departments who say the same thing that I'm saying. You need to listen to us. We've already been talking to you. You need to start educating yourself. Thank you very much. You're welcome.